Now we'll discuss the political crisis being faced by Libya with Dalia Ziada, who is a director at the Meme Center for Middle East and Eastern Mediterranean Studies. She joins us from Egypt's capital, Cairo. Good afternoon, Dalia. Thanks for joining us on the program. Good afternoon. It's always a pleasure to be with you. Now, Libya has voted unanimously for Fatih Bashaga, a former interior minister, to lead a new government. But Abdul Hamid Debebe has vowed to hold on to power and has called the vote illegitimate. Now, are we going to see this political turmoil worsen in the days and weeks ahead? Unfortunately, we are, what we are watching right now is a rivals competition uh, among the political elites that is leading Libya once again to a situation that is similar to we are, what we have seen uh, before 2019. Uh, before uh, Turkey actually rescued the GNA. Yesterday, Abdel Hamid Beba in a TV interview said that what's happening right now is an attempt by Haftar and his allies in the East to uh, invade into Tripoli by force, similar to what happened in December 2019. But now, for many reasons, including, of course, the presence of Turkish troops on ground, uh, in Tripoli, they know they cannot do that by force, by military force. So they are playing this political game to make sure to get out the Beba, uh, to get the Beba out of the scene before it's too late for them. What I mean by too late for them is having an election because these people did not want an election to happen in the first place because it threatens their power. Actually, one of the funny criticisms that they are making against Beba is that he is now a prime minister in the GNU, uh, the government of uh, national unity, and still he is running for elections. But okay, Fatih Bash Agha, who, whom they are calling now, who the parliament uh, uh, is calling now as the new prime minister, is also running for president. The head of the parliament, the speaker of the parliament, Agila Saleh, is also running for president. So actually what we are seeing now is a political competition that is only hurting Libya and the Libyan people, and this should uh, stop. Okay. All right. Now, the division of Libya over the years has seen many people die, and others who have survived have left the country illegally. Now, how will this new leadership solve that crisis? I don't think this uh, new leadership will be able to solve this crisis because, first of all, look uh, who they are aligning with. Uh, Fatih Bash Agha, first of all, is he has his own militia. He is aligning with Haftar, uh, who, whose, whose hands are already stained with the Libyan blood. Uh, he's, he's been involved in several crimes against the Libyan people. Some label them as war crimes. Uh, he uh, tried many times to take power by force. Uh, he is running his own militia, uh, whom they call part of it is the Libyan uh, National Military, LNA. Uh, but also at, at the same time, he's having his own militia who are coming from other places in Africa and he's running them against uh, the interests of the Libyan people. At the same time, uh, the parliament uh, is also an ally to this new leadership. The parliament has been in power for eight years without elections. Uh, the the, the uh, parliament term, by the way, is only 18 months. And they have been there for, for eight years. And of course, any upcoming parliamentary elections is threatening them. So they are not legitimate and they are all the time claiming that they are the only legitimate power in the country, but in fact they are not. So what we are seeing is a very messy situation uh, right now. I think Abdel Hamid Debeba was very right to hold uh, on his position and decide not to uh, quit uh, just because the parliament, uh, which is not legitimate, uh, uh, voted on this. Uh, the only power, according actually to the roadmap that was voted on by the uh, 75 members in Geneva last year, and which actually brought uh, the government of national unity in power uh, in, uh, in March last year, uh, gives the right of calling a new prime minister only to the president of the state, and in this case to the presidential council, not to the parliament. The role of the parliament, even if we agree that the parliament have a role in this, is only to approve the decision of the presidential council. But up till this moment, the presidential council has not 
uh, voted or, or selected a new candidate for the prime minister's position, Abdel Hamid Dibeba is already the prime minister who is recognized by the United Nations. And no one else can change this until a real election happens, hopefully in June, uh, that brings a new government elected by the Libyan people, not anyone else. Okay. All right. Now, Dalia, lastly, the assassination attempt on Dibeba uh, will also dominate the Libyan politics in the near term. Now, he was lucky enough to survive the attempt early Thursday, but could we expect anything similar that could prove fatal for him and the country's political progression? Uh, unfortunately, we may, we may see more similar incidents, but not as, as serious as assassination or targeting uh, uh, high-profile politicians, as we've seen with Dibeba in the last two days. But I think we will see a lot of conflict, of course. But let's go back uh, one moment for why this assassination attempt happened in the first place. According to the primary investigations in the issues, in the issue, it was not an ambush. It was not well planned. They are only two mercenaries who were hired to fire on Dibeba while he was going back from uh, work to home at that night. And I think the main reason for that was only to scare Dibeba from going out. By the way, Abdel Hamid Dibeba is the only politician in uh, Libya who does not have a militia around him, who does not have his own militia to protect him like everyone else. He has been in the street all the time, uh, connecting with people, connecting with young people, connecting with older uh, tribal, uh, with older uh, people, uh, with different tribes. Uh, so he was very involved among the people. His popularity is increasing. So I think this assassination attempt is only uh, somehow a an attempt to scare him, to stop him from mingling among the people anymore so they can have a space to continue with distorting his government, distorting him personally, and uh, launching the smearing campaigns against him and thus paved the way for uh, the new government, which is pro Haftar, pro uh, uh, Tobruk, the parliament in Tobruk, and Aguila Saleh, and all the bad guys who has been already involved in destroying Libya in the past and should not come back again. Okay, so finally, in your opinion, though, will this attack prove to be effective? Will Debebe continue to be amongst the people, as you just very well articulated? Actually, so far, he's uh, showing a lot of bravery. He's insisting to continue fighting. He said very clearly that I'm uh, ready to step down as a presidential candidate if this is going to help Libya continue with the transitional phase uh, and continue with the roadmap. Uh, he also very bravely, actually, in a recent TV interview, he said, uh, I don't care. I know that God protects me and I trust this and I'm doing the good thing. Even if I die now, I don't care. This is very brave and I think this is very assuring. The Libyan people as well are very fed up with this political elite. They like the Beba, the majority of them. Uh, big portion among the youth like the Beba, and I think they will stand up against anyone who want, who will try to invade into Tripoli, either by force or by political manipulation, as we are seeing right now. And they will eventually support the Beba because he is supporting them. He is standing on their side. Mm -hmm. And his strength comes from the people. So hopefully this will succeed and we will not see Libya sliding once again into uh, square zero or square one where division is leading to uh, conflict and conflict is leading to a civil war. Hopefully, we don't see this happening in Libya again. Okay, hopefully. Dalia, thank you so much for joining us. It was a pleasure talking to you.